Hello, I'm going to do this intro in a car that's defrosting because I'm on my way to the library. It's not my usual library though. There's this thing in BC where if you're visiting a different branch that doesn't belong to your library system, if you get a certain sticker on your card, you can still take out things from that library. That's what I'm going to do while I'm back in the Comox Valley. Now I'm going to take you to the Courtney branch, which I really love. It wasn't my usual branch when I was a kid because I lived in Comox and this one's in Courtney. However, the one that I went to when I was a kid doesn't exist anymore. It moved and I've never even been to that branch, so we're gonna go to the one I actually know that still exists. That means I of course also brought my little tin of suggestions for Library Scavenger Hunt. If you've never seen Library Scavenger Hunt before, I take your suggestions, I go to the library, I find a book that fulfills that prompt, and then I read it. I've done this a couple of times before, the playlist will be down below. I haven't really found a book I've loved doing this yet, but this opens me up to things that I will probably never pick up otherwise, which is why I like to do it. So. I'm gonna defrost a little bit faster and then get going. Hello, we made it. I'll show you an exterior shot if I can get one. If there's people around, I probably won't because I don't like being that weirdo in public, but who knows. Um, so I have my suggestions from you lovely people. Let's find one and uh, see if it's going to be hella annoying or not. Oh, two. Okay, so this one is... Okay, I'm okay with this one. Colors of a pride flag. So any pride flag. So this one should be decently easy to do. I'm not going to figure out a pride flag ahead of time. I'm going to find a book that has some pretty colors on it and be like, yes, it's this flag. Perfect. Uh, so let's go do that. The irony is this says be kind, but it hurts my eyes like a son of a bitch. Okay, an important thing of note with the BC1 program is that you have to basically register at every single new library system you go to, which is fine. I, I didn't care about that, but that's just not a thing I knew before. So if you're in BC and you're trying to do the BC1 thing, that's a thing. Ah, there we go, there's the light. So I had many options. I even showed some things that I want to read, but didn't take because I already knew I wanted to read them. So that one being uh, Camp by Elsie Rosen, I know I want to read that. And I've already read Going Off Script by Jen Wilde. I actually read that at a drag show, believe it or not, the first half of it I read while waiting for a drag show to start. But I just wanted to show it because it's pretty and I love Jen. Jen did my avatar for my channel. I love Jen. The book I ended up picking up was Bright Shining World and mostly I picked this up because it kind of looks like the bi flag as well as it was the shorter of the two books that kind of look like the bi flag and this one has a male protagonist and I don't read a lot of male protagonists so I might as well and also the synopsis sounded kind of weird but I will give you this more of a rundown of the synopsis when I actually start reading the book. For now, I have to go to my parents' house and start making Christmas treats. We're making butter tarts. We already did a video about this. I'm gonna link it. Because apparently, nobody outside of Canada knows what butter tarts is, and that's, that's just wrong. It's basically sugar. <laughs> While his coal is perpetually moving against his will, his father has an important job with an energy company that he refuses to explain to Wallace, who is over it. Not that his father ever cares. Just as Wallace is getting settled into a comfortable life in Kentucky, his father informs him that they need to depart immediately for a new job in a small town in upstate New York, which has recently been struck by an inexplicable outbreak of hysterics, an outbreak centered right in the high school Wallace will attend. So, good times for young Wallace. Regular type, modern times. In a new town, things go from disturbing to worse. Schools are having mysterious visions, a school bully, the principal, and the town police force take an instant to dislike to Wallace, and the young student body president is either falling for him or falling out of touch with this world. Also, minor detail, 
The trees in town appear to be talking to people. Well then, if you're going to make sense of your life, you've got to start somewhere. Bright Shining World is a novel about coming of age in a time of accelerating chaos, of young people finding hope and courage and community and light in a darkening world. Hello, it is a few days later since I went to the library and last night I actually read the first chapter of this book and it's weird so far. So um, I've gotten Chad to read you the synopsis because I don't like reading the synopsis. I just don't like reading the synopsis before I read something. So, and I figured because this is a male narrator, maybe I should get a male to narrate the synopsis. If you liked having a guest speaker speak the synopsis for you, let me know because I can definitely get friends of mine to do the synopsis for free future books and then I don't have to read the synopsis, but you still get to know what it is. I'm also in a cabin in the woods basically right now, which uh, is kind of lovely, I'm not gonna lie. Anyway, this is weird. It's about this kid named Wallace and his dad has this job where he basically just has to pick up and leave whenever this company wants wants him to go do whatever he does. Wallace doesn't really know what he does. He knows that he works for this company that has a lot of power plants that seem to be doing a lot of polluting. And now he's being dragged to New York, which is several states away from where he woke up. And he has to go to this high school where apparently a case of hysteria has broken out. And there's a bunch of kids that have hysteria. And his father doesn't seem to see that there's a problem of him also going to this high school if there's like this disease that is spreading around. And also what the hell even is hysteria? That's something that we haven't even gotten to and I know about a little bit about the medical history of hysteria so I'm just like okay well this book is going to be weird and I think that's why I picked it but uh, I'm gonna keep reading. Sorry, I got back in my reading spot before I realized there's something else I wanted to say. The, um, the way this narrator talks is really interesting. It's kind of snarky and kind of repetitive in words but in like a believable teenager-ish type of way. Like I don't I don't interact with a lot of teenagers right now, so I could be completely wrong, and I'm not trying to say it's like he's saying YOLO all the time or whatever the stereotypes about teenagers happen to be right now, because honestly, I don't know. Um, but, uh, for example, this sentence was, he looked like a shadow that had gotten roughed up in an alley by other darker shadows, and um, that's like a speech pattern that I've seen a couple of times throughout this book so far, and I've only, like I said, read the first chapter, so um, I'm enjoying that is basically what I'm trying to say, <laughs> and I'm going to go back to reading. Now. He's also very snarky in the way he talks to his dad, and this part just made me snort laugh. Any strange behavior, you steer clear, okay? Dad, you just defined high school. Why, hello. Did you have a good day? The sun has gone down, so you know, finding a place to film is interesting. Um, so I've read the first few chapters, and it, this place is weird. Like, what, the most popular girl in school told him if he wants to know what's going on that he needs to look to the trees, and then he watches some trees and one of them seems to wave at him and he freaks out and is uh, basically just runs away from the trees. And then he's kind of befriended by a loner loser type of character and also beat up by like the typical jock on the first day. Except for the typical jock like actually explains to him his whole life philosophy and like really academic language about like power imbalances and people coming into our town that we don't know and why we're afraid of them and that type of stuff. So this book is really weird, but I'm enjoying it. He's now at a football game and I think he's trying to figure out more of what's going on. He's trying to talk to the popular girl again because she's hot and obviously he wants to talk to her for that reason, but also to figure out what's going on in the town because his dad won't tell him. I guess I should also mention that the loner's only other friend who is usually very silent just had one of those bursts of hysteria in the middle of the cafeteria and the teachers had to basically drag him out and then tell everybody else to go back to class. So that happened. So the popular girl just showed up at his locker and told him that she's being followed around by a four foot high tennis ball with little tiny arms and legs that just follows her around and is mad that she might give up tennis to go to Princeton if she gets into Princeton, but she might not get into Princeton because reasons. And then she tells him about the night people who apparently live in the forest behind her house and I'm just like... <sighs> I would be so excited to leave this small town. I would just be like, Dad, when are you going to be done at this plant so we can leave this small town in the middle of New York? Because Homer is a weird place. William, why do you look so mad? Just, what's wrong? Hello, another day, the same sweater, but this time we're drinking whiskey out of a jar. 
Oh, that's actually really nice. Chad randomly came back with this taster pack of three different scotches, and uh, yeah, it, I'm having good times with it. I don't know what's wrong with this. This, not my fruit, not my problem. <laughs> Anyway, since we last spoke, uh, Wallace went into the forest to talk to whatever the hell they're called, the night people or the trees. He basically talked to trees, and uh, he may or may not have hysteria now, we don't really know. But one thing that I found super interesting was it discussed kind of this flashback to his childhood when he was watching the series finale of Roseanne, and then something was revealed that... If I, were, if I saw it as a kid, I definitely forgot about it. And I was like, wow, that makes me want to watch the old version of Roseanne, not the racist reboot. So in short, this book continues to be really screwed up, and I'm actually really excited to see what happens. What's up, William? You look comfy. William the cat may be cute, but he also made me get out of bed at 7 o'clock to let him out, and then didn't want to go out, and then just kept yelling because he was lonely, so I got up early and now I'm reading um, I got like 50 pages left but I'm also watching reading sprints for my friend Katrina which is uh, making it uh, a little bit more fun. Hello I finished Bright Shining World and I don't know what to think. You do get to understand why what's going on is going on and then people try to fight it and because it's in such a weird book you don't really understand if it's going to be fixed or if it's going to be something that has to be fought a lot. Probably the second one because that would reflect more clearly with the world that we're in. It's a weird book. I don't really want to go exactly into the reveals and that type of stuff because it, obviously that's something that would spoil the book a little bit, but I feel like it is something that kind of comes out hopeful but also comes out super dark and takes certain things that teenagers might be facing at this point to r ridiculous extremes. Um, so yeah, I did find it an interesting book. I think out of all the books I've done for Library Scavenger Hunt, this is the one that I've enjoyed the most, so there's that. And it was also fun to visit a completely different library system to grab the book since I'm not at home. If you liked this format of vlog, I actually have a whole playlist of my Library Scavenger Hunt vlog, so I'll link that down below. Does this sound like a book that you would be interested in? Let me know about it down in the comments below. Also, if you have a prompt for me that you want me to add to my jar, let me know that down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. If you don't feel like leaving a comment but want to make sure that I know you were here, just leave me an emoji or a smiley face if you happen to be on your keyboard. Some people have asked if this is a way to financially support this channel, so I set up a coffee account, which is a digital tipping service. The link for that is down below, as well as linked to my PayPal and my Amazon wishlist in case you would like to buy me a book. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye!